everyone. Welcome to Jolly Molly TV. Are you ready to make another fun block in Kimberbell's Candy Corn Quilt Shop? I am. And right now we are working on the Witch Series blocks. So this video is going to concentrate here on the Boulevard Witch right here. Isn't that cute? Okay, we're not going to be doing the little quilt or dealing with her buttons for her hands today. We're just going to be quilting the background and quilting the rest of her out, including the appliques for everything. So we're going to do the Boulevard Witch block today. So look in your pile of plastic bags or plastic pouches and search for the fabrics that are for the Boulevard Witch. Gather those up. Bring your embellishment kit along to the machine because we're going to have some fun little glitter aspects here. And I will meet you over at the machine. Let's go. Okay, we are at the embroidery machine. And today we're working on the Boulevard Witch Block. So the first thing we need to do is load the designs on the machine. For reference, I have the Brother Dream Machine, the original one, and we are going to combine designs in this process. So we're going to add the quilting designs, which we're going to work on first. Then we're going to add the embroidery applique design on top of that. Now, if your machine can't do that, that's okay. What you're going to do is we're going to load the quilting designs like we're going to do in this first step. Then you'll stitch that out and then you'll come back and then you will clear the memory of your machine. And then you're just going to bring up the applique design and stitch that out. Not a problem. The trick is make sure you don't move any of the designs when you load them. Load them directly as they come up and you will be fine. All right, so let's do this. So let's go to my flash drive where I store the files. I have it under candy corn. Whoops. Then I have it under the quilting designs. I separated the quilting designs from the main quilt applique. So now we need to figure out which design we need to load. If you're looking at the Kimberbell instructions, look on page 27 for the Boulevard Witch. It actually goes on to page 28. So if you flip the page over, look at the top right. It says the block is going to measure four and a half by eight and a half. Four and a half by eight and a half. The design size that we want to pick for four and a half by eight and a half is going to be the four by eight. You always want to pick a size slightly smaller, allowing for seam allowances than the final squared up size of your block. Not the original fabric size that you cut. What is the block going to end up being at the end? In this case, it's going to be a four and a half by eight and a half inch block. So I want to pick the four by eight design. Oh, look at that candy corn. That's so cute. So I brought it up gray. I'm going to click set. I'm not going to move anything. And now I'm going to click add. And I'm going to go back to my flash drive, go back to candy corn, and then go to my main quilt folder where I have all the applique. And I am looking for the Boulevard Witch block, which is right here, the hat with the corset and the skirt. That's it, that's the one we're looking for. So that one's great, let's click set. Brought it in beautifully and we don't need to change anything. We're just gonna hit, click embroidery. So as far as the machine goes here, we are ready to go. Let's go to the hoop cam as I call it. And I have put a piece of poly no-show mesh cutaway stabilizer in my eight by 12 hoop. Unfortunately, we can't use the five by seven or even the eight by eight hoop on this one, at least on my dream machine, because it's telling me the design is eight and a half by four and a half. So I had to go and use my eight by 12 hoop for this to fit. So I've gone ahead and put the poly no show mesh in the eight by 12 hoop. I'm checking my bobbin. The bobbin thread is good. We have a full bobbin. So I can go ahead and put the hoop on the machine. And now the machine says the carriage will move. I click OK and it centers the carriage. All right. So we are ready to go. So the first thing we want to do is we want to stitch the placement line for the batting. Because remember, we're going to be doing the quilting designs first. So I put white thread in the top of my machine. 
Reason being is the fabric that we're using in this kit is kind of an off-white. It's really cool with these little hatch marks. And so I'm going to do the placement line for the batting. I'm going to tack the batting down and do the placement line and tack the fabric down all in white. I'm not going to change the thread until I get to the quilting stage, which we'll talk about in a few seconds. So I've loaded white thread on top of my machine. So let's stitch out the placement line for the batting. Okay, now I have this piece of batting, which was a scrap from the last uh, witch block. And it's going to be a tight fit, but I am going to go for it. I am going to see if I can get this to fit. Because if you see here, there is like an eighth of an inch on each side. But I think I'm going to go for it. I hate to waste materials. I really do. And this is something that I think is going to fit. Let's go for it. All right. So let's put the foot down. Keep your fingers crossed. Let's go ahead and tack down this batting. We did it! Woohoo! We did it. It squeaked right through. I love it. Okay, now. One of the main questions would be is what if this had not worked? What if it had just hit the edge or just been a little bit shy of the edge on a corner or two? Actually, that's okay because the tack down stitch here is literally doing what it's supposed to do. It's tacking down the batting. But if it was just a hair shy on one section and the rest was still tacked down, it would be still in place enough to do the top fabric and then do the tack down and then do the quilting. The quilting again will keep this fabric down. What you don't want to do is have it super short on a corner because then your block is literally going to have a hole underneath where the batting should be. But if I had just missed a corner or just hit the edge of this, it would have been fine because the, there wouldn't have been any gap underneath between the fabric and the batting. The main thing is you don't want like this whole corner to be cut off or something because you're not going to have a complete block. But if you just miss it on the edge or just hit that edge, it would still be fine because the integrity of the entire block is still in place. Okay, so yay, it worked. So let's go ahead and take the hoop off the machine. Let's take this over to the table and let's trim away this excess batting. the batting's trimmed up. Now we're still going to have white thread on the top of the machine. Let's put the foot down and stitch out the placement line for the fabric. Okay, so now let's put the fabric down. Now you don't really have to measure it to center it if you don't want to. Just try to eyeball and make sure that you kind of get the same amount of fabric on the left, on the right, and on the top and the bottom. Because this fabric has a little bit extra cushion, we know for sure that this is going to be where it's trimmed up. So we have plenty. And you can kind of feel with the batting as well and line up as to making sure you've got enough fabric on all sides. It doesn't have to be spot on perfect. It just has to cover the placement line with enough fabric on each side. Okay, so let's tack down this fabric. Foot down, white thread still on top, and here we go. Let's tack down the fabric. Okay, 
So now I'm going to put this light peach thread in the top of my machine. So if you remember the last two videos, I used this as the quilting thread when we did the show and share sign and then when we did the Emmy witch. So this block is going to be right next to that. It's part of the four block series. So I want to make sure that the quilting matches those other two. I'll be doing this again for the next video where we do the haunt witch. So all four of these I want to be quilted in this thread. So I'm going to put this in the top. Okay, so I've got the peach thread up on top. Let's put the foot down and we're going to stitch out the quilting. In real life, this is about a five minute stitch out. So we'll fast forward through and here we go. I love watching that quilting stitch out. So relaxing. Takes away the stress, doesn't it? Very cool. All right, so now we are on to doing the next step, which is gonna be the placement line for the skirt. So the skirt is going to be black if you have the fabric kit and are using that for this project. If not, you're going to match whatever color thread you have selected for this skirt that's the thread color you want to put up on top so i'm going to put black thread up on the top because i'm using black fabric for the skirt so let's put the thread you need up on top so now i've got black thread up on top of the machine and let's put the foot down and stitch out the placement line for the skirt Okay, that was easy enough. So now we're just gonna put the fabric over the top of that skirt and make sure that we have got plenty of coverage all the way around. We are good. So I'm gonna use my stylus to hold this down or you can tape it, your preference. Let's tack down this skirt fabric. Okay, now we're going to take the hoop off the machine, we're going to take it over to the table, and we're going to trim away this excess fabric. So that's trimmed up nicely. Now we're getting ready to do the placement line for the corset. And the corset is this cool fabric here. It's kind of a pinky purple if you're using the fabric from the kit. So I went in my stash and I found kind of a 
nice pinky, light pinky purple thread that kind of goes with that nicely. And so I want to put this color thread in the top of my machine. We're going to stitch the placement line and then the tack down of this fabric in the same thread. Okay, so I've got that pinky purple thread up on top. Foot down and let's stitch out the placement line for the corset. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put this fabric down and make sure I cover that line. I kind of want to fussy cut a little bit. I'd like that flower on this side to be part of the corset. So I'm not going to put the fabric dead center. I'm going to kind of say, okay, this is kind of where I want the flower to be. And I can easily line that up and have plenty on this side. And then double check it. I think that would be kind of cute. So let's see how that comes out. So let's go ahead and use the stylus because it's a little too close to the fingers. Hold it down or tape it, foot down, and let's tack down the corset. All right, that worked out. The flower's kind of in the middle of her corset there. All right, so let's take the hoop off the machine. Let's take it over the table and we're going to trim away this excess fabric. Right, see how that flower looks really cool in the center there? Nice. Okay, so now we're getting ready to do the placement line for the hat. Okay, and the hat's gonna involve this awesome purple glitter sheet. Make sure you have peeled off that top layer that I talked about in the last video, that there's a top layer of plastic on this that you have to make sure that you peel off that exposes this gorgeous glitter, okay? We're gonna put purple thread in the top of the machine because I wanna match the glitter hat to do the placement line. And if you look at what happened, after I threaded my needle, I got a loop. And if you've learned anything from my previous videos, danger zone, if you see a loop after you thread a needle, stop, take your stylus, flip that loop out. That loop, nine times out of 10, will wrap itself around the foot and will break your needle real, real quick. So get rid of that loop if you see it. All right, so now that we've done that and we do have the purple thread up on top, let's go ahead and stitch out the placement line for the purple hat. <laughs> Okay, so now we want to place the glitter sheet down. Make sure, again, the plastic is off the top and you want to place it right side up. What I think I want to do, because the hat is kind of has the point up here, I think the point would be good hitting here and then the hat would come down. So I'm going to do the glitter sheet at an angle with the point going straight up with a little bit of room there to cover everything and I'm going to put the foot down use my stylus to hold it down or you can use tape to tack it down either way let's tack down this glitter sheet So pretty. Okay, now we're going to take the hoop off the machine and we're going to take this over to the table and I'm going to trim around and cut away the excess glitter sheet from around the hat.
isn't that looking cute already? I love the glitter sheets. So now before you actually bring the hoop back over to the machine, you can go ahead and press the glitter with a warm iron, but make sure that you use a pressing sheet or pressing cloth on top of it. Not for very long, it's just, just a, a little bit that will help the glitter adhere to the fabric before we put the stitches on. And we didn't do that on the previous videos, but I'm going to do mine all at the end. And if it has stitches on it, that's fine because I'm going to press it with a pressing cloth upside down to make sure that the stitches don't flatten, lose some of their three dimensional. I tend to do them all at once, but if you have your iron up and ready, you can go ahead and do it at this point now before you bring it back over here. Just don't forget to use the pressing cloth, okay? But I will walk you through as well when I do it at the end, and I'll show you how I do it, okay? So now the next step, once you put the hoop back on the machine, is we're gonna put black thread up on top because we're gonna stitch out the hat band fill. Now, it's a stripe that'll go across the hat. Here we go. All right, and because the next step is gonna be the boots, we're gonna have black boots and we already have black thread on the top of the machine. So we can just put the foot down and stitch out the boot fill. This is about a four minute stitch out in real life. So let's fast forward and give her some boots. she's got boots okay now we have to give her hair so I love their idea of doing like a bright green well, not quite neon but close this is like a very bright lime green so I'm gonna put that thread in the top of the machine and then we're gonna give her some hair okay I've got the green thread up on the top and let's put the foot down and stitch out her hair That's fun. Okay, now we're gonna leave the bright green thread on the top of the machine because we can do the skirt detail. It's a skirt ruffle fill at the bottom, which they show in the same type of green. So let's do that. I think that would be a nice color offset. So foot down and let's stitch out the skirt ruffle.
That is looking so good. All right, now we're going to put black thread in the top of the machine because it wants to do a satin outline around the outside of the skirt. So let's put black thread up on top. Okay, so here we go, foot down, and let's stitch out the satin detail. This is about a three minute stitch out in real life. Let's go. I always love those satin stitches. That's one of the uh, wonderful things about Kimberbell. They always finish their designs so eloquently. I mean, nothing is left, you know, exposed or raw except for the raw edge glitter, which is that's what it's meant to be. But everything else is finished, detailed, all finished really, really nicely. And I love the, that attention to detail. It means a lot because it makes your embroidery look absolutely awesome love that okay so now we're gonna leave black thread in the top of the machine because we're gonna stitch out the corset detail and we want that matching the skirt so let's do black thread up on top still here we go here's the corset detail Okay, we've got one stitch left. And this will be a challenge you put here when I take it off. I have to choose what color thread. So, do I do matchy matchy with the corset and go pink? Or do I do an offset and do this purple around the corset? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I think I'm gonna go with the pink. It's a pinky purple. I think it would look better matching the corset than this darker color. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Okay, so I'm going to put my pinky purple thread in the top of the machine. Okay, so let's stitch out the last stitch, which is the corset satin outline. You got this. Put down and let's go. Oh, I love it. Pink's my favorite color. So just to add that, you know, but it's kind of a pinky purple. It's just, just perfect. Love this. All right, let's take this block over to the table and let's finish it up. Just love it. Look at that. That is so cute. Don't you love it? All right, so let's go ahead and take this out of the hoop. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to set this aside. I don't want you trimming it up yet because what we're going to do, we're going to add it to our collection here of the sign. Can you see all that? Yeah, you can. Okay. Because these are a little bit different sizes, what I want to do is I want to square them all up after we finish the fourth block, which will be the last witch. I think it's called the Haunt Witch. Once we finish that block, then I'm gonna show you how to square them up with both the orange pop rulers and a regular ruler, okay? 
So I just want you to set these aside for now. And then when we finish that one block, that's all we got left of this row, then I'm gonna show you how to finish all these four blocks up. Isn't that cute? Look what you guys have done. You did it. This is amazing. And I know you're having fun. I don't have to ask. I just know you are because it's just so stinking cute. Kimberbell has cuteness locked down on cuteness overload. It's amazing. The attention to detail, the glitter aspects, and the fact that a beginner can do this project. Their instructions are amazing. They walk you step by step, but then also in combination with my videos, I literally take you from the beginning, from stabilizers, fabrics, supplies you need, all the way to the end. So I hope that you're feeling confident because you can do this. I hope that you're feeling really good about how much you have accomplished and how far you've gotten. That's the main goal I know of both Kimberbell and of my channel, Jolly Molly TV, is I want you to be able to do this project. I want you to gain the skills, gain the confidence in doing piece by piece, one by one. You'll always have my videos to go back and watch and rewind as many times as you need to. You can ask questions because I want you to just be able to succeed. I want you to do these projects and be able to proudly display them in your home or give them to a loved one as something that you have made. And then you gain the skills and then you can go and do more and more projects out there. The possibilities are endless. But with Kimberbell projects, they are just so adorable and so fun to work with. It makes the whole process very, very enjoyable. And I hope you feel the same way with that. So I hope you enjoyed making this block today and I hope you stay tuned here on Jolly Molly TV. Please subscribe to my channel. It's free and it helps me do what I do for you and I truly appreciate it. Also click those bell notifications so that you're aware of when I upload a video and uh, click the like button too as long as you're there if you like the video. And I know you're gonna come back and do the next block with me so I will see you soon here on Jolly Molly TV. Take care. Bye-bye.